Today, we're comparing the new Garmin InReach 2 with the original Garmin InReach Mini. That's next. Welcome back on Renegade. I'm Jeff. This channel is all about hiking, backpacking, the outdoors, and all the gear in between. And if you're into those things too, consider subscribing. Today we are looking at two popular units, the Garmin InReach Mini 2 and the original Garmin InReach Mini. These are GPS satellite communication devices that enable you to have two-way texting communication when cell service is unavailable. They also allow you to have an SOS feature so you can contact emergency management if you ever encounter emergency while you're out in the backcountry. The InReach Mini came out in 2018 and I've actually been using it the last three years and I've been pretty happy with it. It's been reliable. It's always gotten the job done. However, there are a few things I wish could be improved upon. For instance, since the battery life. I wish it could be actually longer. And I also wish that I would be able to have something that was a little bit more user friendly with an interface and compatible with different devices as well that I would have. I also wanted something that would have me be faster connection to satellites. I can pinpoint my location uh, precisely and quickly. Since then, Garmin has released the new Garmin InReach Mini 2. It came out in February of 2022, and it actually sought to improve upon those things that I just listed there. You have better battery life, you have better connection times as well, and you have more precise locations as well as a more friendly user interface. The Mini 2 sells for $400, where the Mini 1 sells for $350. Upon looking at these two units, you'd be hard pressed to find out what distinguishes them. They look very similar and they do have a lot of similarities. So we're going to dive in and look at some of the features and differences and decide what is the better bang for your buck when deciding between these two units. So first off, let's talk about the similarities, the things that they share in common such as the features. Both of these have SOS capabilities for emergencies, so you can contact emergency management stuff and they can send you a helicopter, whatever's necessary to rescue you while you're out in the backcountry. Both of these have text to text where you can send it to someone's phone number, their email, or another uh, device as well. So you can have conversations with friends and family to give them peace of mind, letting them know while you're out in the backcountry. You can also send them your precise location that they can follow you on a map as well. Both of these devices allow you to connect to your phone and you can send messages that way uh, rather than typing individual characters on the mini device, which is uh, kind of cumbersome. But with have, pairing it with your phone, you can actually type in just like you're sending a text message. So pretty cool at that. Both of these devices will allow you to get up-to-date weather forecasting uh, based on your location. Both of these also will require a subscription plan uh, to use. You can do monthly, you can also do yearly, um, and you can check the Garmin Explorer uh, website there to find what would be the best uh, feature for you uh, for your plans and your needs as you go backpacking. Now appearance wise, both these devices look almost identical. They both share the same form factor. They're the exact same size and dimensions. They are also the same weight being about 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. Both of these share the same water resistant and impact rating of IPX7, which means these can actually be submerged in about three feet of water for about 30 minutes and be okay. The exterior of the device are actually very durable and rugged with this type of plastic that you see here on the sides it also has this impact rating uh, rubber which also helps to uh, help with the grip as well looking at the front of the unit it looks almost identical as well you can see the screen here uh, now you can also see in the mini you have this white bar going across where that's been blacked out on the Mini 2. Looking at the right hand side, you can see you do have your OK selection buttons. You also have your back buttons as well. And you also have your SOS feature here. Now this is a protected case here, a hard covering to prevent any accidental uh, presses of the SOS button. So you have to flip it up in order to press it and that exposes the SOS button. Looking at the left side, you do have your toggle switch for, for up or down arrows, which you can go through the selection menu. And then right under that, you have a covering that covers the uh, charging port. Now we'll get into that in a little bit more detail because the charging ports are slightly different. The power button is located on the top and you do have your Iridium uh, antenna on the top. You also have these little things here, these little holes so you can put like a toggle switch or something like that. On the back, you have a nice little uh, clip where you can uh, clip your carrier 
carabiner to hang it on your backpack or anything like that. Now let's talk about the differences. First, the Mini 2 is gonna have your higher resolution screen. You have 176 pixels by 176 pixels, where the Mini 2 has 128 pixels by 128 pixels. Looking at these uh, side to side, uh, the Mini 1 has kind of a wider uh, kind of screen, where on the Mini 2, you have better pronounced blacks and a better contrast as well because of the higher uh, resolution display. It's much more noticeable when you see it on smaller text uh, when you're looking on the devices of the screen that the Mini 2 definitely has the advantage in the screen resolution category. So the Mini 2 actually has an updated user interface that is more friendly. It's actually quicker and responds a whole lot faster. It's also more friendly because as you click through the arrows and toggle through the menu, you can actually see it resembles a Garmin watch kind of interface. You can see all the apps, and then if you want a specific app, you can actually uh, go ahead and, and click it. And uh, what that will do is go ahead and give you more detail as well. Where the original Mini actually only has one app for the screen, so you can't see all the other apps you have. You just have to toggle through to see what's next. So it covers the full screen. The Mini 2 actually just shows a brief part of it and you can click on it to get more detail. Now, one thing I noticed is the Mini 2 actually connected a whole lot faster to my location uh, position uh, when it, I turned it on because it was able to connect to many more satellites that were around the sky at the time, where the Mini 1 actually took a whole lot longer because it was only reliant on the GPS uh, satellite system, which is composed of 34 satellites. The Mini 2, on the other hand, is actually using the GNSS satellite system, which is four satellite systems for a total of 84 satellites. So it can locate your location a whole lot quicker uh, than the original Mini 1. So that was something I really appreciated. Another thing that I noticed is it connects to my phone a whole lot faster as well. The Mini uh, 1 originally uses Bluetooth 2.1 technology where the Mini 2 actually uses Bluetooth 5. So it's a whole lot quicker and it's a whole lot more battery efficient uh, for that to use the Bluetooth settings there. Another thing we notice is with the Mini 2, you actually have improved battery life. And the reason for that is while they share the exact same battery capacity, the updated processor and updated user interface makes the battery a whole lot more efficient. So it's, it's a much better battery uh, in that regard. It's going to last a whole lot longer. Um, the Mini 2 can have up to 10 to 14 days of battery life based on location tracking every 10 minutes. So, so that's pretty cool at that. Um, under a tree cover, it's going to be slightly less as well. It's going to be reduced because it's constantly going to be searching for signal. Now, you can actually even increase the time tracking interval to from 10 minutes to once every 30 minutes, and it can last up to 30 days. So pretty phenomenal at that with the Mini 2. So if you're into multi-day backpacking for five plus days, the Mini 2 is awesome because it's going to keep you covered without having to needing to charge it again. Another thing with the Mini 1 is that didn't last as long. And if you're hiking in the Pacific Northwest like I do, and you're under tree cover quite a bit, if you do leave that on, it's going to drain it a whole lot faster where I can get you know, at least four or five days out of the Mini 2 in the same kind of conditions. So another thing I noticed in regard to battery life is with the Mini 2, the battery stays charged a whole lot longer than the Mini 1 while it's in the off setting. When, if there was certain weeks that I would go away without backpacking and just left my inReach Mini off, the battery would be, still be completely drained. Where the Mini 2 actually fixed that to where if I turned it off, it would, it would pretty much pick up where I left it off. So that was cool that the battery wasn't depleting over time just because I wasn't using it. So that actually saves battery life in the long run. So the original inReach Mini actually uses mini USB, which is a lot slower of a process, where the Mini 2 uses the more up-to-date, more power-efficient uh, USB Type-C. Now, USB Type-C is going to charge it at least two times faster than the original uh, mini USB. I like this as well because I can take less cords out in the field because the majority of my devices are actually USB Type-C, so I don't have to take another cord simply just to charge my inReach Mini because now the inReach Mini 2 shares the same cord, so pretty cool with that. Another cool feature with the Mini 2 is the app that it uses now is the Garmin Explorer app. And this is a cool app because it's actually a lot more user-friendly in my regard. It's more modern, it's more detailed as well. 
And uh, it actually is the same app that you can use it to pair to your Garmin watch if you have a Garmin watch. So uh, pretty cool with that. You don't have to have multiple apps just for all these different devices. Where the original Garmin inReach Mini uses the Garmin Earthmate app. It was specifically for the uh, Garmin uh, GPS devices. And so there it seems a bit more clunky, more clumbersome. It also didn't sync with other devices like the, the Garmin watches as well. And you could still do a lot of the same features like messaging or looking at maps as well um, from that. But uh, the having the Garmin Explorer app just really makes the, the user interface a whole lot more uh, of a friendly experience uh, when you're using your phone paired with the Mini 2. Another cool thing about the Mini 2 is that there's a feature called Trackback. And uh, this is something where it actually leaves a breadcrumb by behind you as you're walking and does this automatically without draining any extra battery life. So pretty cool at that. And how you would access that is you would click on the OK menu here. You then scroll down to navigate. You click on that and then you have track back and it would load your most recent course and you can zoom in by toggling on the buttons and uh, you would just click OK and go, and it would actually take you back to your original starting position. So using your breadcrumbs that it left behind. Now you can do something similar with the mini, but what it does is you have to manually go in and, and set the breadcrumbs for it to leave. And then that will also use a bit more battery in the process. So not as efficient as the mini two is in that regard. Another cool thing with the uh, mini two is you have the access to uh, get your weather on the device as well. So you can click on weather and it tells you a forecast based on your uh, location there. And as you click it, you can get more details as well. You can update, you can do anything like that. Another cool thing is with the Mini 2, you have a built-in digital compass. So if you like reading maps and following that and don't want the weight of an extra compass, you can use your Garmin inReach. And how you do that, you just scroll down to your navigate, you click on that, and then you have your digital compass that comes up. And you can turn it and it shows you uh, where you are and all that. So pretty cool uh, that you have that additional feature there where you do not have that with the original Mini. Now, one of the coolest updates that we have with the new Mini 2 is the ability for it to connect to a Garmin watch. So I have the Fenix 6 here and uh, I can scroll down and as you go down to uh, the menus, it's actually going to create an inReach app. And from there, what that allows you to do is you can go and see any other uh, messages that you have sent or anything like that. But it also, what it'll do is it actually send your messages from your inReach device to your watch. So if you're walking and you have your uh, inReach device hooked onto the back of your backpack, you can get your up messages straight to your watch. Another thing that you can do is that you can actually send preset messages from your watch. And another additional feature you can do is you can access the SOS feature also from your watch. So this is handy because if your backpack is on you and you have your inReach hooked to the back of it and you take a fall, you don't have to go and, and grab that. You can access it right from your wrist on your watch. So pretty cool feature at that. I think that feature alone with having it integrated with the Garmin inReach uh, device and your Garmin watch allows you to have a lot more freedom and versatility uh, and is a feature, I think, alone that it's worth upgrading for. So based on these two devices, which one would I recommend going with? Well, based on the improvements that the Mini 2 has, it's really a, a, a winner in my book. You have the better screen, you have the better uh, processor, more efficient battery, as well as it being able to connect to your location a whole lot faster because of using uh, much more satellites uh, in the system to do so than the original Mini. But I I think the deciding factor for me that really pushed me over the edge uh, was the capability of it pairing to the Garmin watch. If you have a Garmin watch, I definitely think it's worth the upgrade, giving you the extra freedom and flexibility uh, that you have pairing it with it. Other than that, the Mini 2 uh, really does a lot of the same things as the Mini 1. So if you have the Mini 1 and you don't have a Garmin watch, it might be worth just sticking it out and, and keeping that. But if you're new to the market and looking for a device, I definitely recommend paying the extra 50 bucks, get the additional features here and, uh, up, and get the Mini 2. So what did you think of the Mini 2 versus the Mini 1? Which one won the battle for you 
and why? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Are you going to be upgrading or are you going to be sticking with the Mini 1? Or if you don't have any of these devices, which one will you go with? Leave me a comment. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe for more uh, backpacking content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.